So I'm really glad, we are all glad that you all have joined this morning. Uh, GIFT stands for Generations in Faith Together. Experiencing lessons of God together. So look around, you can see on your screen who's joining us, you can see all ages, and we cherish seeing each and every one of you. Typically, we would be around tables in the fellowship or possibly in the memorial sanctuary. We can adapt and we can be in our own homes doing this. So I ask that everybody just have some patience this morning. This is new for all of us. Uh, we've never done it this way before. Some of you are better at this than me. Um, and some of us are better at it than each other. So just be patient and um, calm if things kind of go in and out, all right? GIFT is an interactive time, and so you will notice that there will be many participants this morning, and you all are invited to participate if you feel that when we ask some questions as well. So let us open with a prayer. Let's bow our heads and have a prayer. Good morning, Lord. We come to you this day with grateful hearts that we have a new day before us to enjoy, to use in honor of you and to be in relationships with one another. We are excited to see faces of friends and dear ones this morning. We praise you for everyone's gifts and abilities in our congregation and how they use them to your glory. Guide us through this time as we study your word, share with each other, and support one another. Help us laugh, learn, and grow. In your name we pray, amen. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to have a story and Kathy Plum is going to be our storyteller. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be sharing the same seat. It's all a strong wind blowing. It blows while we tie in the air. It's the falling one of the seas being smaller than the other. He had to kill all the us and where are they all going? Us here, the oaks up, up, up it goes. It flies too high, and the sun rays burn it up. But the tiny seed sails on the earth. Another sea land on a tall and icy mountain. The ice never melts, and the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seed fly on, but the tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. Now they fly over the ocean, falls into the water, and drowns. The others sail on on the wind. But the tiny seed does not go as as the others. One seed drifts down onto the desert. It is hot and dry, and the seed cannot grow. Now the tiny seed is flying very low, but the wind pushes it on with the others. Finally, the wind stops and the seeds fall gently down on the ground. A bird comes by and eats one. The tiny seed is not eaten. It's so small that the bird did not see it. Now it is winter. After their long trip, the seeds settle down. They look just as if they're going to sleep in the earth. Snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. A hungry mouse that also lives in the ground eats a seed for his lunch, but the tiny seed lies very still and the mouse does not see it.
Now it is spring. After a few months, the snow has melted. It is really spring. Birds fly by, the sun shines, rain falls. The seeds grow so round and full, they start to burst open a little. Now they're not seeds anymore, they are plants. First, they send roots down into the earth. Then their little stems and leaves begin to grow up toward the sun and air. There is another plant that grows much faster than the new little plants. It is a big, fat weed, and it takes all the sunlight and the rain away from one of the small new plants, and that little plant dies. The tiny seed hasn't begun to grow yet. It's too late. Hurry! But finally, it too starts to grow into a plant. The warm weather also brings the child out to play. They too have been waiting for the sun in springtime. One child doesn't see the plants as he runs along and, oh, he breaks one. Now it cannot grow anymore. The tiny plant that grew from the tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbors grow even faster. Before the tiny plant has three leaves, the other plant has seven. And look, a bud, and now even a flower. What is happening? First, there are footsteps, then a shadow looms over them. Then a hand reaches down and breaks off the flower. A boy has picked the flower for a friend. It is summer. Now the tiny plant from the tiny seed is all alone. It grows on and on. It doesn't stop. The sun shines on it and the rain waters it. It has many leaves. It grows taller and taller. It's taller than the people. It's taller than the trees. It's taller than the houses. And now a flower grows on it. People come from far and near. Look at this flower. It is the tallest flower they have ever seen. It is a giant flower. All summer long, the birds and bees and butterflies come visiting. They have never seen such a big and beautiful flower. Now it is autumn again. The days grow shorter, the nights cooler, and the wind carries yellow and red leaves past the flower. Some petals drop on the giant flower and sail along with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. The wind blows hard, but the flower has lost almost all of its petals. It sways and bends away from the wind, but the wind grows stronger and shakes the flower. Once more, the wind shakes the flower, and this time, the flower seed pod opens. And out come many tiny seeds that quickly sail far away on the wind. The end. And so now Carol had some questions for us to ponder. So what was good about being the tiny seed? Being very small was an advantage. Nobody picked it. Nobody paid attention to the banana thing. Yes. <laughs> Nobody uh, picked the flower since it was small. Yes, that's good. <laughs> 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 One other question to ask. Okay, the second question that you wanted us on was what was the drawback? 
being tiny seed. Hmm. What was the drawback from being a tiny seed? It relies on Mother Nature to be strewn across the land, to be planted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People couldn't see it, so it's hard for people to take care of it. Nobody wanted it. <laughs> good, good idea. Great. All right, well, let's try some true and false. So what I'm going to ask you to do is you're going to hold up one finger if you think it's true, yes, or two fingers if you think it's false. <laughs> good job, Joel and Susan. <laughs> okay, are you ready? So just right. hold up one finger if it's true, two fingers if it's false. All flowers grow to be a giant size. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's not right. Please. Seeds need water and sunlight to grow. You are smart. <laughs> mushrooms. Seeds can be blown by the wind. Yes, they can. There are giant flowers that are taller than people and buildings. True. <laughs> that geek's like, I want to grow those. <laughs> Seeds grow into plants. Yes, they do. Seeds are moved in ways like with water and wind. Yeah. Yes. And bird and squirrel. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> a child stepping on a flower means that it will not grow anymore. That's false. Mm. That is false. <laughs> yeah, don't you go around stepping on flowers. <laughs> As I always told my kids, watch the flowers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Birds and mice eat seeds. Yeah. That's a true. Good. Some plants grow. Say again. Some hear. plants, some plants grow faster than others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. Weeds. 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 Yeah. Candy <laughs> lines. Seeds cannot grow in the desert. Mm. That's yes. False. Right. Ice ice never melts on the mountain top. Oh that's a false statement. It depends on if it's in Antarctica. <laughs> Plants do not grow in cold weather. I think that's false. That is true. <laughs> no. no. You have cold weather plants. Your spinach and all that other stuff grows in cold weather. I want to see you all are paying attention. You tell them, Becky. Huh? Good job, Becky. Right. I wanted to see if you all were paying attention. <laughs> all right, here's the last one. Different types of seeds grow in different places. That is true. Very good. Now we have some people that have been doing some planting and we have some different people that are gonna show you some flower pots they have decorated and what they have planted in it. So we're going to start with the Asturinos. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so this is our plant. Hopefully you can see it. Ooh, 
It says, wow. let's see. Live life in full bloom. Ooh. And then Sorry, it's a heavy. That's the girl, beautiful. The girls made flowers and bees and ladybugs with their fingerprints. Awesome. I love it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Great. And we um, have kept the flowers now alive, which is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> And what it is, didn't look what so is, well, and then they come back. So we're kind of excited about that. <laughs> it looks like pansies, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Now we're going to visit the beach family. Sharon, Jacob, Yogi, and Abby. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, so for our pot, we thought about Opaquan and what it means to us, and we did our logos theme. Whoa. I love it! Oh. 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 <laughs> Good job! And we planted our pansies, and unlike Vicky, so far they are still alive, so <laughs> I have to get them back to you so they can stay that way. <laughs> that is beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> now we're going to go to Bill and Debbie Bender. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> Okay. That's the door plan. Okay, we went with the hands, heart, and feet theme of our church. So these are our hand prints. Each one of Bill and I each had one. And then we have hearts and then our feet. Yeah. Oh, it's fun to paint yeah. our body parts. Right. <laughs> um, but the problem was. Doing the feet part, Bill stepped on my foot. I might have a couple broken toes. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's a doctor. We have, we have verses around the top that are deal with using our hearts, hands, and feet to serve God and Jesus. And then we have, we are, so again, we had to put our feet and our hands on this pot. And we have potted geraniums. Yay. Thank you nice. so much. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to go to Catherine and Reagan Newhouse. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, you're screaming. Sorry, I do talk loud. We um, went with the theme, Wait for the Lord. Turn the volume down. Because we felt like during this time, um, that's what we're doing. We're waiting patiently. And when you grow flowers, sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to wait. And so... We put the phrase, wait for the Lord, and Reagan put some flowers beside it, and it comes from Psalm 27, 14, and it's yeah. happy. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Thank you so much. So these beautiful potted plants will make their way back to Opekin, and they will be outside our entrances, so you all will be able to see them, and we'll make sure we let the rain water them, and we'll water them to keep them blooming. So thank you to all of those families for sharing those beautiful things with us. We're gonna look at God's word now this morning and um, we're gonna hear from Lisa Wilfong. Okay. Okay, often times in, in the Bible where Jesus goes, large crowds would gather. Jesus would use stories to teach the crowds the ways of God. These are called parables. Today, our scripture is a parable about a farmer and seeds. Bear with me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I got it. Hold on. Okay. This is from Matthew, the parable of the sour. That same day, Jesus left the house and went to the lakeside where he sat down to teach. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and he sat in it while the crowd stood on the shore. He used parables to tell them many things. Once there was a man who went out to sow grain. As he scattered the seeds in the field, some of it fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some of it fell on rocky ground where there was little soil. The seeds soon sprouted because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it burned the young plants, and because the roots had not grown deep enough, the plants soon dried up. Some of the seed fell among the bushes, which grew up and choked the plants. 
but some seeds fell in good soil and the plants bore grain. Some had 100 grains, others 60, and others 30. And Jesus concluded, listen, then if you have ears. Thank you, Lisa. So let me ask, and we'll think about this question. Do you think it's easy to tell by looking at soil, whether it is good or bad? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> when can you find out whether seed is good or bad? Soil. Oh, the soil? Well, if it's very rocky soil, you may know that mm -mm, it might be a big challenge. Right. Maybe when you start to dig down in it, right. you can tell better what the quality of the soil is. Yeah. Right. Sometimes God's seeds fall into unhealthy places. What would be some of these unhealthy places? Good question. Streets, sidewalks, right? Yep. Robin says you can test the soil too. Yes. Right. Feel free to use the chat if you want to type your answer. The garden or the flower beds. Yeah, those would be good places, right? Yeah. Very healthy. The gutters of our house is not a great place. <laughs> no. Oh. no. Frustrating. With all the weeds, Robin says, yeah, that's not too good. But cracks in the driveway. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> so let me share a little bit about what this parable means. I'm going to be reading further in Matthew. Preach it, sister. <laughs> Listen then and learn what the parable of the sower means. The image about the kingdom of God, but do not understand it, are like the seeds that fell along the path. The evil one comes and snatches it away. What was. <laughs> The seeds that fell on the rocky ground stand for those who receive the message gladly as soon as they hear it. But it does not sink deep down into them. It has no roots, so it doesn't last very long. So when trouble or persecution comes because of the message, they give up at once. The seeds that fell among thorn bushes stand for those who hear the message, but the worries of this life and the love for riches choke the message out, and they don't bear fruit. The seeds sown in good soil stand for those who hear the message and understand it. They bear fruit. Some as much as 100 times, others 60 times, and others 30 times what was sown. So what do you think Jesus wants us to know from this parable? Everybody's so quiet. I'm sure a guest. <laughs> that he wants us to spread yeah. his word far and wide because we don't know what to do on that land again. He wants us to spread his word far and wide. That's great. And you all that planted in your flower pots, you had good soil to use, right? So we want, as we plant seeds, some of you told me that your plant was still alive. Well, how did you keep your plant still alive from when you received it? Water. Water. Sun. Sun, yes. So. Water. Yes. So as we see it in us, 
And as we plant seeds in others, we have to nurture those seeds. We have to learn and grow in our faith. We have to hear the message and try to understand the message and apply it to our lives to understand and live out what Jesus would want us to do. They talk to the plants too. <laughs> talk to your plants. <laughs> well, I have a little demonstration to show you, an illustration with some jars. Just the one with the rocks. See that? All right, in jar one, let's plant it in different jars, okay? And you will see there are very different results. So if we turn this around, in jar one, the seeds just disappeared. They could never take hold or take root because all that's in his jar is hard gravel. An animal such as a squirrel maybe could have snatched the seeds that were in the midst of the hard gravel. So that's jar one. <laughs> jar two. <laughs> the seeds grew, but they didn't last for very long. I don't know if you can tell, but it's very droopy. <laughs> they wilted and withered. There wasn't enough soil with the gravel to hold moisture and to help the roots grow. So it withered and died. Just a little bit of soil with the gravel. Jar three. Oh, yes, yeah, seeds did grow, but so did many weeds. The weeds took and they suffocated and choked the other plants that were growing from the little seeds. <laughs> now this one's not in a jar, but you can see lots of good soil, moisture, light, and room for the plant to grow. So it took root and it sprouted upward. These seeds landed on good soil and they took root. <laughs> so as seeds are planted in our lives, in our hearts, will they land on gravel? Will they be choked out by weeds? Choked out by experiences that let us lose our faith? Will they be not grow because there's not enough soil? Or will they be nurtured through trust in God, through studying and learning, so that our faith will grow? Hopefully, we will be like the healthy plant, <laughs> growing in our love and knowledge of our Lord. So keep in mind those jars of plants. So now, for a little fun, we have Kirsten and Bo and Virginia, and Beth, and Willie, that are going to demonstrate something that happens with seeds. So I'll let one of you all explain what we're doing. Okay. Oh, I see Kristen Boer using a jar, and we're using a wine glass. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're using wine glass. So we're going to make some okay jump. So first we'll put our apple seeds into our container of water. One glass. Okay. And to make them jump, we're going to add some effervescence. There you go. Effervescence! We're not muted anymore. <laughs> oh, and inside 
Water's jumping. You can you can see the little seeds jumping around inside the glass. Water is also jumping out. Pressing. Um, you're really doing it out of the packet without the filter. Does this actually create something? Did you drink this? Yes, actually. Yay! I'm going to It doesn't taste good, though. Kind of salty. You're really good. Come on. So, what this little experiment was. You put some water in a glass, in a tall glass, put some apple seeds down in it, and make sure the seeds sink to the bottom. Then you can put in an Alka-Seltzer tablet, and the seeds jump away. So you can try that at home if you're bored one day. You have Alka-Seltzer tablets. Okay. All of them? We have a lot of apple seeds because we went to Mark or Miller Orchards and got a lot of apples. So, we're going to put ours in. We have a lot of seeds. There you go. Now we're going to add our Alka-Seltzer tablet. See if our apple seeds jump. There they go. They're jumping. There they go. Yay! Jump, jump. Say cool. Yay! Good job, everyone. Thank you so much. It's always fun to do little experiments like yeah. that and see fun things that happen. Well, we're gonna do a little blessing for if you have a snack with seeds in it. And Pastor David is gonna take our blessing for us. All right, here's our blessing today. Thank you, Lord, for seeds of love. Thank you, Lord, for good food to eat. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with loving families to share this feast. We're gathered together while in our homes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Now, do you all have any fruit? Um, <laughs> here's the words. Does it um, snack with seeds in it? Mm -hmm. Nobody has any snacks. We got apples. We <laughs> had <laughs> apples. Strawberries. <laughs> grapes. Apples. Oranges. Oranges. Strawberries. Yay. <laughs> well, maybe as you eat them, you can notice the seeds that are in them and what they look like. Because the seeds in different things are different. Anybody have any poppy seeds or <laughs> sesame seeds? What is Debbie? Have? Debbie, what do you have? Kiwi. 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 Oh, I see a Luna. <laughs> All right. Well, before we close today, of course, this goes a little quicker when we're not all in the same room and really can't um, interact a whole lot. We have some prizes to give away. So Pastor David has put all of your names in a basket. He was working on that in another room. And so we're going to give away copies of the little booklet, the book, The Tiny Seed. And right inside... 
there are there are your own flowers that you can plant. So if you win one of these, I will send it to you, and you can open it up and there's directions. Plant your own seeds, right? <laughs> and this this really is a wonderful little story. Uh, if you don't want to keep it yourself, you can give it to somebody who would enjoy having a little storybook. So who's our first winner, Pastor David? Oh, let's see. It is Ron and Ann Smith. They get the red copy of the book. Who <laughs> gets our next copy? The next one is Catherine and Reagan Newhouse. The suspense is building. Let's see, it is Vicki Kreitz. There she is, yeah. And last one Carol Tubbs. <laughs> Good job. Well, I will make sure you get your prize. And again, if you don't have any use for it, I'm sure you know somebody that could use it. Um, somebody else that would appreciate the storybook and planting those flowers. So I don't know if anybody has any closing comments. I just want to say thank you for joining us um, and persevering. It's not the same as being in person, but it certainly is very heartwarming to see your faces and to see you moving around and to know you're doing okay. So thank you for joining us. Anybody else have anything to say? Everybody smile. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always have something to say. Okay. <laughs> you need to tell us about the next time we'll do this, please. The next time we will have a Zoom gift event is on May the 31st. And the theme is, oh dear. Belonging to the family or something? Belonging, yes, belonging to the family of God. I'm sorry. Right. I had a senior moment. <laughs> so May 31st, belonging to the family of God. And what is the, uh, what's special about May 31st in the life of the church? It's what day? Pentecost. Hopefully, last day of Kumbh. So, what does everyone have to wear? We all have to wear red. 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 Come today. So, if you have any suggestions, please send me any ideas. If you have any way we can improve this or we could do things better but you all are very good sports you persevered well uh feedback let me know if you could hear um that would be really important because we have to rely on being able to hear really well for these things to go halfway decently okay yes pastor dave <laughs> i never miss an opportunity Carol and Rebecca, tell them about Explore Opecan and what that is, what that is, and when that is. Unless you want me to, I'll be glad to. Explore Opecan is an opportunity to come to the church grounds and explore all around things you may not have ever looked at, or noticed, or done on the grounds. Uh, it will be starting on May the third. Um, if any of you did the Holy Week walk, it's similar, but this is um, this is more fun oriented. So you will explore different places. There'll be a guide, and that's all you need. It will tell you to go to different places around the grounds and notice different things, maybe do different things. Um, but just to help you get out and do something a little different, bring you to the church grounds because we miss being here, hopefully. And you can experience that. It'll be available for a whole week. All you have to do is come to the front porch. There'll be a bin there with your instructions, and you're off to do it on your own. So when it's a pretty day, come and enjoy Explore Opecan.
It's available May 3rd through the 11th. Is that satisfactory, Pastor David? Sounds good to me. The grounds look really sharp around here. Linda Gibson was here yesterday. Stella Strickler was here yesterday with a lot of other folks, social distancing, but mulching and sprucing things up. So we thank them very much. And Explorer Opeka is good for any age. Mm -hmm. So you come as a family, um, come with a friend and separate yourselves a little bit and you can still enjoy it with somebody. You just don't have to be right next to that. Okay. <laughs> You'll read about it in the newsletter. Right. Any other closing comments, suggestions, questions? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah. everyone. Pass the Queen Week. Pass the Queen Week. Good to see everyone. Bye. 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 It's good to see faces and hear voices. We really miss everybody. Peace be with you. And also with you. you. <laughs> God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. All right. We're going to sign off so we can get ready for worship in just a little while. Okay. Bye.